Hey everybody, I guess it's my turn for the 30 days of preparedness collaboration. My topic today is going to be prepping on a budget, so let's check it out. All right, everybody, welcome back. So you may not know it, but September is Disaster Preparedness Month. So a bunch of the YouTube prepper channels have gotten together, kind of put together by Prepper Potpourri and Sutton's Days, and we'll be doing a video a day, so you can check out the channels down below. I'll have a list of all of them, just to raise awareness about being prepared and taking care of you and your loved ones. So let's get into my topic today, and that's prepping on a budget. Now, you're going to see some items out here. I'll explain what's going on with this stuff. We will get into food in a second. But uh, let's face it, if you've seen the inflation going on, if you've seen the shrinkflation in the stores where you're paying the same amount for a smaller package of something, and if you're new to prepping and don't have a ton of cash to drop on prepping, I want to give you some tips to get stocked up before things get too bad. It can be really daunting when you're a brand new prepper and you get all excited and you're like, yeah, I want to do that, and then you watch what everybody else has and you're like, oh, I need to be a millionaire. Well, you don't. And there are many ways to go about it and be very economical and save a whole lot of money if you use some of the tricks that I've discovered over the years. If th as things are right now, it's probably the best time to start because as it stands now, things aren't going to get any cheaper. Basically, in an inflating market, you eat tomorrow at today's prices. So if you buy stuff today, it's cheap compared to what it will be in a week or two. So that's a good way to think about it. Now, I have some basic rules. Um, do what you can with what you have. That's the first one. If you don't have a ton of area to store stuff, don't buy a ton of stuff. Um, if you don't have a lot of money, don't go out and do expensive purchases first. Focus on food and water. I started out with stuff here because I wanted to show you how cheap you can get some of it. But uh, we'll get into the food and water in a second. You want to store what you eat and rotate it. You don't just want to buy something and hold it in a closet for 10 years and find out it's rotten when you actually need it. And that's why you want to store what you eat because you'll use it. You'll eat it up. When it gets old, you can use that up, go out and buy more and replace it. So that's one of the reasons why you eat what you store and you rotate the old stuff out. Never go into debt to prep, okay? It may seem like, you know, ah, who cares? The world's going to collapse. You know, I can run my credit cards up. It never works that way, and you'll be very, very sorry in the end. So never go into debt to prep. It's not a bad idea to maybe pick up a second job or a side hustle or maybe a little side gig that you do to make some extra money, but you don't want to go into debt. Lastly, take in cons into consideration your local disasters first. Okay, if you live in California, you're going to have to worry about earthquakes, right? You're probably not going to have to worry about uh, tornadoes. <laughs> so take into and prepare for things that could actually happen in your area before going nuts and preparing for, like, you know, alien invasions and uh, EMP. So you'll find that you'll be a lot better prepared all the way around if you do that. And in the long run, you'll be prepared for almost everything. Now, one very basic thing that people seem to underestimate and it costs almost nothing to prep, is your physical well-being. Especially given today and how we have viruses and everything going around, it's really important to take care of your physical well-being. If you're not used to walking, get outside and take a walk. If you go to the gym like I do, maybe go a few extra days. Um, if you haven't tested the gear that you already have, go in your backyard and test it. You don't have to go off on an overnight camping trip to test a stove out or to test something out. It's a good idea to do that. And it's free. So, let's begin with the first thing here. Um, I want to talk about water storage really quick. Now, there's two types of water storage that I'm going to talk about in this video. One is bulk water storage, and that's going to be this guy here. Um, I find these are the best. You can store it in soda bottles. You know, you rinse out the soda bottles and whatever. But I find these big five-gallon buckets, five-gallon containers, are the best for water storage. I mean, you can put away five or six of these and have some decent water stored away. And you can fill them from your tap if you really had to. All in all, not a bad thing. Next up, we're going to talk about non-potable water or water you use to wash up. And that's why I have this here. And this is an empty Tide container. Now, you're never going to get these clean. You're never going to get all the soap out of them to store water that you can drink in it. So what I like to do with these, and when I'm done with this section of the video, I'm actually going to do it, is fill them up with water back here and let them sit. And when I need to wash my hands or something during an emergency, I literally put this over my uh, sink, push the button, 
rinse my hands, and I've got soapy water without even working for it, and I'm not using my drinkable water for that. So that's definitely one little trick. One of the things you never want to use is milk containers or containers similar to that. They don't last long. They do break down very quick, and you'll find a big, big mess if you use milk containers. First of all, the milk takes a long, a lot of work to get the taste out there. I wouldn't want to drink water with a, in a milk container. Um, I probably would not be able to get rid of all that, you know, old milk taste in it. But it will break down very quickly. Those containers don't last very long. I wouldn't even suggest buying the one-gallon containers of water unless you're going to transfer them over into something like that that's a lot stronger. So let's move on to the individual items. All right, now you're not going to be able to find everything that you need for prepping in a secondhand store or, you know, a yard sale or whatever, but you can find some good stuff. Um, that's why we're going, to we're going to hold off on this and this, but I want to show you. This is a knife I bought for five bucks in a secondhand store. Still using it. Works great. Is it a high quality, best of the world, you know, top of the line super steel knife? No, it's not, but it's a good starter. And using it in prepping, you're going to find out you're going to need a knife. So uh, definitely check it out. You don't need to go out and spend $500 on a custom knife just to get started. You'll learn with this knife. You'll learn how to sharpen it. You'll learn knife technique. If you do damage it, who cares? I paid five bucks for this. I've been using it in the channel for videos now for years, and it's still going strong. So there's one item. Another item, and you know, I often talk about this. Um, I love having a form of communications. And just one-way communications is fine right here. You know, this is an AM FM shortwave radio. Now, you have to watch closely on your groups on Facebook. This was 20 bucks. Okay, these used, these old sand jeans, used sell for about $150. This woman just wanted to get rid of it. She says, oh, it doesn't work. Well, all that was wrong with it was the batteries were dead. So, there you go. You got yourself a top-of-the-line, really nice shortwave radio. It's, you know, a few years old. It's an older model, but, uh, you know, for 20 bucks. Now, you may not find that same deal, but they are out there, and that's important to keep an eye out for things. Next up, this little guy here, okay? If you know how to use a gas um, lantern, this was $8 in Goodwill. Um, when I saw it, it was very, very dirty. The mantles were gone. This was all full of crayon or something, melted on it, the clear glass. Um, and it looked really rough. I wasn't sure that it was even going to work. Well, I took it home, cleaned it up, repainted a little bit on the top here, and uh, put some new mantles on it, put some fresh gas in it, and the darn thing worked perfectly. So, again a light source now for when the power goes out. Now you may not feel comfortable using something like this indoors, but trust me, there are a ton of LED lanterns similar to this in thrift shops everywhere. So that's another deal right there. Here's another thing. Okay, here's another Coleman item. This was $15. Okay, if you've seen these for sale, you know these are old, uh, I believe these are old military surplus type stoves. I don't know if they're military surplus anymore. But uh, let me pull it out here quickly for you and show you what it looks like. And I mean, these are just deals you can find. There you go. Now, something like that, if you were to go and uh, it's a Peak One, Coleman Peak One. If you were to go online and uh, hunt that down and go on eBay and look for one that was, you know, this kind of condition, it's practically brand new, you'd probably end up paying a fortune for it. Okay? I've seen them for as much as 200 bucks. Okay? This thing is brand new. I've used it in a video to show you it when I got it. But uh, other than that, it is absolutely perfect. It's got little legs that fold out, and it was 15 bucks. So, can't beat it. Anyway, that's just a few things that um, you can find in stores. Now, again, it's not an exhaustive list. There's tons of stuff you're going to need for prepping, and some of these things you may not be comfortable with. You may not want to run a gas stove in your house or a gas lantern. But trust me out there, there is tons of stuff in thrift stores. You just have to look, and you have to make it a job, almost like a job. Every day, you know, when you got free, free time, you cruise by your local thrift shop, look in it really quick, and then leave if nothing's in there. You don't want to get caught into buying more stuff that you don't need, but you just want to take a look as often as you can. Now, we have a good bunch of thrift stores out here. You know, I know full well when I lived in California, our thrift stores had nothing but baby clothing. So I understand if your stores don't have this, but keep an eye on your local for sale groups, your local um, yard sales, things like that. Sometimes people don't know what they have and they just want to get rid of it. And something like that, hey, that's definitely a cool idea. 
cool little item to use. So, let's talk about things you can do for free or very inexpensive next. All right, now the first thing you can do that's completely free is save good articles. Now, you may think, well, we've got the internet. I can always go back and read it if I need to, but what happens if the disaster takes down the internet? What happens if you have a power outage in your area and it's a local disaster and you can't get online? That's what this book is. I've shown this book many times. I have three of these now. It's broken down into sections here with food and uh, water, purification methods. So what I did over the years is when I found something, there's an article from 2002, when I found something useful um, as an article, I printed it out, got my three ring hole punch, and put it in. And I made sections in this thing. So we have navigation in here. I have all sorts of stuff for weapons, different type of weapons I might run across that I might have to work on. Um, just a ton of information in this here to be able to um, read it when you need it and not worry about, oh, is the internet up, or oh, did I save it on a hard drive or something. You have a physical copy right here, and it costs nothing to do, other than paper and some printer ink. And this is a long-term thing. Like I said, I got started doing this years ago, and, you know, at, at first it was like maybe five or six articles in here. And over the years, it built up to the point where this one's pretty full, and I started a second one. You will find that you learn more by printing these out and reading them as you put them away, than just reading it one time online and forgetting about it or bookmarking it and never going back to it. When you need the information, I guarantee you it's right here and it's not online somewhere that I can't get to if the power's out or something else is going on. So let's talk about first aid kits. This is a big one. A lot of folks will go out and buy um, a first aid kit in a store. And it's basically a glorified band-aid kit. You really can't find a good all-around first aid kit um, in a store. So what I like to do is, what I like to tell people is, learn about first aid. Learn about the things you're going to need in your kit um, first, before you go and buy. Now, yeah, you can go out and buy basics. You can go out and buy Tylenol and, you know, the things that you're going to use every day. And I always encourage people to stockpile that stuff. But I'm talking about a kit that you can grab and go, maybe in a bug out situation, maybe if a family member is injured. This is a pretty advanced kit that I put together here. It's in a roll up that I got from Goodwill for 50 cents. Okay? I've got tourniquet in here. I've got Sealox blood clotting stuff. I mean, I've got everything in here along with common meds that I take. Uh, I've got my allergy meds, my uh, Aleve, all sorts of stuff in there. Um, and it's a pretty well put together kit. And it really didn't cost me all that much because I didn't buy a bunch of junk ahead of time. You get stuck in that trap where you're like, oh, that looks really cool. Let me buy that first aid kit. And you realize that your shears, let's say, your EMT shears are absolute garbage when you get the kit. You have to really be careful. So learn about first aid. Maybe um, read up on what you want. You can buy a small kit and improve on it. But in the long run, you're going to want to build your own kit. And again, it may not be cheap. Some of the stuff's kind of expensive, but at least you'll have it there when you need it. That's probably the only thing that's not budget friendly is for first aid stuff. Um, you know, it can run a lot of money, but you get a good solid kit like this and you're good to go. Now, that doesn't mean don't stockpile your common medications, don't stockpile uh, any kind of prescriptions you're on. If you have an understanding doctor, sometimes you can talk to them and say, hey, can I get a 90 day prescription out, you know, and go ahead and pick it up, put it away. Anything else for illnesses or anything like that, by all means, you know, stockpile that stuff. But I'm talking about building your first aid kit. You really want to build it yourself. And you don't want it to be just a bunch of Band-Aids. You know, and that's what a lot of the kits are. So, let's move on to the last thing here. And this is kind of important. A lot of people forget this part, and that's having some cash. Uh, one of the things that I first did when I first got into preparedness was I read up on having a cash stash. Now, this is just a representation, of course, here. What I did was, every time I had a dollar left in my pocket, I put it away. And I put away dollars, fives, now I got some 20s in here too. But I put away that money, so um, whenever I had those dollars, dollar bills in my pocket or change, I put it away. Once a month, I took my change, I cashed it in, I got singles, fives, tens, whatever. And before I knew it, I had a thousand bucks in my safe. So, it's very important to do that, and that's how I did it. I just saved singles and fives. I wouldn't spend any singles or fives or change. If I spent a 20 and I got two singles back, the singles went in my right pocket. When I got home, I put them in the envelope in my safe. So, 
Starting a cash stash is very important. You don't need to have a thousand bucks. You don't need to have five thousand um, dollars. It's just good to have a couple hundred dollars in cash because a lot of times now, when the power goes out during storms or disasters or anything like that, you don't have a way to um, get your stuff from the store. If you've got to shop the next day, those machines are down. So having cash is really, really important, and it's also easy to um, to do. It may be kind of painful, you know, you're not used to doing that, but consider it part of your preps and you'll never spend it. Like, would you run into your storeroom right now and buy the mo eat the most expensive item you have stored food-wise? No, because you busted your butt to get it. Same with the cash. So, let's move on to the food now, because that's going to be the fun part. All right, so what you're seeing here is about three weeks of me taking an extra $25 and buying prep items and items that I'll actually eat prep items for this video in particular. I wanted to show you that, you know, you can take 25 bucks a week aside and amass a pretty decent food stockpile. Um, you know, I mean, yes, we have some ramen. We have some filler type stuff here. Uh, I also have some first aid stuff back here. Um, you know, another thing too, I was talking about first aid before. The um, Dollar Tree is actually a good place to get some basic medications like Advil, Aleve, stuff like that. It's really not that bad. I even have a pack of batteries back here that I actually really need. Um, another thing, too, is they sell these uh, emergency candles. So just something to think about. You know, for 25 bucks a week, you can really um, start stocking up. And this is only three works, weeks' worth of stuff. Now, over here, I want to remind you guys, if you have a Kroger or a Smith's, um, they have case sales from time to time. Now, you might blow your entire budget for the week on a case of something. Um, this was, these are soups, these are eight, um, what are these, uh, eight servings per bag of different hearty soups. I saw these and I had to get them for this video. Um, they were 15 bucks, I believe, for one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So all in all, not a bad deal for 15 bucks. That's a whole lot of food. Now you do have to eat the whole thing once you make it, but you got potato in there, you got other stuff. It's, uh, it's a pretty good deal. It's not just potato soups. There's a bunch of different types of soups in there. So, uh, you know, sometimes you'll blow your whole budget maybe on one thing. Maybe you'll blow your whole budget buying a few first aid items, you know. But it's a good idea to make sure that you're spending that little bit. Now, if that's too much, there's nothing wrong with spending only 10 or 15 a week. It's a good way to get started. This is how I started prepping. Um, this is exactly how I started. And I literally had, you know, a bunch of food like this in a couple of cardboard boxes in my closet. Um, this was pre-Y2K when I wasn't really sure what was going to happen as far as, uh, as far as Y2K goes. I didn't think the planes were going to fall out of the sky and the world was going to crash. I thought people were going to go nuts. So I made sure I had a little extra. And this is how I started prepping. This is exactly how I started. I went and I spent a little bit extra every week and dedicated that to preps. I even had a separate part in my cart, you know, where I put my preps in this part of my cart and the regular food shopping in this end or I'd keep it up top. So you can really do some uh, decent prepping with, uh, you know, 20, 25 bucks a week. Um, this is a combination of Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Walmart. Um, you will notice Walmart went to these new tamales. Now, I love these things. I don't know if you've ever had them, but these are really, really good, and I will eat them. Uh, boiled peanuts. These are um, pretty darn amazing. <laughs> I was really shocked to see them. Um, Sunshine State Survival did a video where she showed her weekly haul and she had boiled peanuts from Walmart. And I'm like, you're kidding me. They have them at Walmart? So I went and got a couple of those. Um, you got beans in here. I mean, again, this is just random a smattering of, of things that I figured we'd need as, uh, as I stocked up. I've got some pasta sauce. I have uh, some spaghetti back here, some elbows. Uh, definitely a mix of everything. A lot of these things here are from uh, Dollar Tree. A little celebrity luncheon loaves. Basically, they're small spam, and they have the old-fashioned key along here where you twist it off. But I also got some of the uh, great value stuff here. So definitely, you can do a really, really good job on a few bucks a week. And this is how I started prepping. You don't need to go out and spend a thousand dollars on freeze-dried food. Um, I know I sell it, and I know you know. I always tell you guys, you know, better to get prepped up like this than to go out and try to save your money and buy. A year's worth of freeze-dried food. Anyway, folks, that's the video for today. Now, tomorrow, I believe Pinball Preparedness is doing a video about getting your financial house in order. 
So make sure you check it out. I will have the playlist down below and all of the channels that are doing this collaboration um, below there. So I want you guys to check them out. Um, I'm doing another one on the 27th of this month, so make sure you come back for that one. And I thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out our links down below, our Amazon affiliate store. Our freeze dry wholesaler link where you get 15% off just for clicking my link. Our My Patriot Supply link down there. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. And our Thrive Life freeze dried food store. I know I just talked about no need to buy freeze dried food. If you want to, it's there. <laughs> anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Uh, I wish you lots of luck in prepping and getting started. Stay safe and stay prepared.